we're going to do the open the box of the Beretta. Um, so this is what you get. You get a nice hard case, um, push pull lock system here. And when you open it up, what you're going to get is you're going to get the gun unloaded, magazine in it. Okay. And you would get extra back straps, which right now it's currently wearing the small. Um, we were kind of playing around with it uh, since this is the wife's gun. Um, she prefers the small grip, but you'll get a uh, medium and a large with an added uh, extension here on the beaver tail to help you get a uh, further away reach to the trigger. So you get that. Um, you get your extra magazine. And by the way, these are 17 shot mags. If you don't already know, you would get a loader. You would get uh, cleaning brushes. Let me just put that back in there. And you'll get a fancy paperweight. So uh, let's set this off to the side here. And what we're going to do is double check. We're going to make sure. Now, I've answered this several times. I don't know if we'll be able to pick it up, up here. Um, on why... I like to clean these guns prior to shooting them. If you look here, you can tell there's a lot of oil and stuff on it. Uh, it is just caked in this gun uh, to preserve it. Um, I want to get that out of there because I don't know if that's gun oil or not. Plus, I use frog loop. So, everybody knows what's going to happen here. Put that in there. And just proceed to soak this in rubbing alcohol. Okay, let that set for about 25 minutes to so a half hour. I'll clean it all up, and uh, when I come back, we'll go over uh, some of the features and stuff on this gun. So hang on. Okay, we're back. We've got it all cleaned up. Um, everything degreased from the factory and uh, applied the frog loop. So now we're just going to go over uh, specs on this firearm. So the barrel length on this is 4.25 inches. The chamber is 9 mil, although it does come in 40 or will be coming in 40, uh, depending on the time that you're watching this video. Uh, overall height is 5.6 inches. Overall length, 7.55. Overall width, 1.3. Weight unloaded is 28.24 ounces. Pretty equivalent uh, to the Glock 17, although it is a little heavier. Just to give you a reference point, I think everyone knows what a Glock 17 size is. Uh, so some of the features that is, uh, comes on this firearm is uh, three dot sights ambidestrous slide release, interchangeable back straps, uh, large enlarged um, magazine base plates. Uh, you do get a low bore axe um, slide and, and frame fit, so it is a, a low bore axe. Um, modular grip frame housing. So this is uh, one of them guns that the, the, the trigger components is the serialized number and you can swap out your frames to different colors and, and all that good stuff which you can get all that off their website um, it does come standard with a uh, picatinny rail uh, reversible magazine release so for you lefties out there um, I would rather see it reversible than just uh, you know ambidextrous because um, Personally, me, I don't like that button pushing up on my middle finger on the other side. Um, and it's just fear that the Mac's not going to come out when I need it to. So I'd rather see it reversible than um, ambidestrous right from the get-go. Um, and that's pretty well it. So I want to go over, I'm just going to kind of freestyle here on, uh, you know, my take of this gun. Because um, in between the cleaning and now, we have actually shot this gun. Um... I got a lot of things going on, and sometimes it don't play out the way that I always want it to. So, 
um, just coming from my experiences and it's gonna be really hard to possibly pick this up on camera um, yeah it's not showing up but the front sight is the the dot is bigger than the rear um, as we all know there's a company called excess big dots that specializes in sights to make that big front sight post um, and I really like that I actually will do that to most of my firearms where I take a drill and I will actually drill it out to make it a little bit bigger um, also we'll check and make sure this guns clear okay um, the trigger on this see if I can get it a good focus here so the trigger on this is very flat okay and very wide there's no angles to it on your Glock triggers they do have an angle well it makes it very easy depending on left or right hand shooters to pull your shots left or right when you have a flat face trigger like that it makes it very easy to pull that trigger straight to the rear like you're supposed to um you know these are two features that uh in the aftermarket world companies make a lot of money on on, on this stuff uh, you know you got your zems triggers and your uh glock store triggers and all this other stuff um uh, apex you know they make a really wide facing now this is polymer it's not aluminum but um you know these two features tells me that they were listening to the aftermarket and in my opinion uh, I think they they might be a little late to the game, but they did it right. I think they just watched everybody else kind of not say fail because Glock and M&P and you know your your uh, your SIGs and stuff. I mean they got a really good track record, so I'm not going to say that those guns failed. But um, I think they just kind of sat back and just kind of. Looked at the aftermarket world, looked at uh, what companies were doing, you know, such as finger grooves. You know, these finger grooves aren't so dramatic like a Glock. And I hate to keep saying this because I'm a Glock fanboy. I, I, I have multiple Glock firearms. But they're not so dramatic that they make you grip the gun, the, you know, something unnatural for you. You, you know, your hands go right in there. Um, it's just enough. They're not really, really deep. The grip texturing on this is to the point of, I don't want to say like like my M&P Shield 45, it's too aggressive. The G2 Taurus, too aggressive. Um, it feels good when you're shooting it, but if you ever try to carry it, it's just going to cheese grater your side. This is to that point of, if it was any, if it was any more aggressive, it would be too aggressive. Um, Kind of feels a little quirky when you're when you're holding this gun because of how wide the slide is back here. It looks quirky, but it don't feel it. It really does come together. I guess I'm used to looking at the back of a Glock or or an M&P, so it, it it does take some getting used to looking at that. But um, you know, it, it it comes together when when you're shooting it. Uh, let's see what's some other things I can talk about square trigger guard. I like that uh, I'm not one to Put my hand my finger here when I'm shooting But if I needed to come over top of a table or a ledge or something like that um, You know, it's gonna give me a good grabbing point or if I For some reason felt like I needed to put my finger there. It's there um, The undercut on this is, is pretty nice uh, as you can see here it allows you to get a really good high purchase on this gun. Um, allows you to get up as high as you can. Now, trigger. Okay, so, uh, you know, I've, I've seen Nothing Fancy's video, and he does awesome videos. Love the dude. I've been a subscriber long, 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 long time ago. Um, you know, he's he has access to a lot of really, really good firearms. So, um, you know, he has talked about the trigger being okay. And I know he's probably getting a lot of criticism from it, but you got to think where he's coming from. You know, he, he has access to a lot of really high-end firearms. My opinion on this gun, coming from a Glock shooter, an M&P shooter, um, 
this trigger is pretty fucking awesome and I, I hate to use that language on my channel but um, I, I have no other way to describe it um, so making sure it's clear okay so once you take up the uh, the safety you're at the wall okay so there's no mush and you know take up the safety mush and then you hit a wall you're there okay and it just breaks it almost feels like a single action reset there and as you can see that's all that okay so it's just giving you they're basically just giving you enough slack here to disengage the trigger safety and you're at that wall reset and I guess with for me with the wide facing trigger and that no take up and like no over travel neither see if I can get you no over well yeah there's a little bit of over travel probably has to be um, the only one real quirky thing is the firing pin block safety um, I don't know why they do that um, it's kind of a Beretta thing uh, a lot of their firearms do that um, does it affect it don't affect your sight picture when you're looking down the, the, the barrel it, it it don't affect anything it is kind of quirky and I I really would have liked to seen that not there um, just due to this being a you know a go to war gun um, I don't know what would happen if uh, debris or sand was to get in there how that would affect the trigger um, but other than that let's I'm gonna go ahead and take this thing out um, just gonna roll in some shooting uh, maybe do some accuracy on it and um, just kind of show you how flat shooting this gun is because that's one of the, the other things about this gun is it's so flat shooting um, as far as how fast you can put shots on target it almost reminds me of like a really heavy target 22 almost like your uh, your Ruger mark series and stuff um, so no further ado Let's get some shooting in. All right, so we're out here at the range with the Beretta. Today's uh, ammunition for the testing is uh, sponsored by, uh, or brought to you by uh, Rush Creek Ammunitions here. And uh, if you've made it this far, please uh, subscribe and uh, hit that like button and share and add the favorites. So there you have it guys um, 
That was just a little shooting video of the um, Beretta APX. It's cleared. Um, you know, the gun's done what it's supposed to do. I've let a couple people shoot it. And everybody I let shoot talks about how great the trigger is on this thing. Um, actually, one of my buddies, he shoots Glocks for uh, competition. He shoots in the Glock matches. And he's a GSF, GSFA member or something like that. Uh, so he's got like, I think he said he's got like 16 different Glocks. Um, and he was just astounded at the trigger on this. So, personally me, I think the trigger's awesome. Now, I forgot to mention this in my tabletop. I've seen a lot of people fumble with the takedown on this gun. And I'm not going to lie. When I first got this gun, I almost went caveman on it and just started freaking pounding it. And it was just really frustrating. So here, I'm going to show you a trick. Okay? We're going to dry fire. That's down range, staring at a target. Okay. So we all know that you got to push this little guy in to roll this out. Well, the instructions are telling you to lock the slide back, push this at the same time, bring it home. Okay, so we've already disconnected the sear from the firing pin. I'm gonna push in with my thumb. That's it. I wish I would've freaking known that trick when I first got this gun. Okay. So. There again, I'm going to dry fire, I'm going to push with my thumb, come over with my index finger, and pop it off. Yeah, so, um, I've seen it, like I said, I've seen a lot of people doing it wrong. Actually, where I got this information from was Hickok45, I guess his son, like, was fumbling with it and figured it out. Uh, I should have probably, when I first got it, I probably should have YouTubed it. Uh, but yeah, the instructions are wanting you to lock it back, push this in, and I'm telling you, yeah, it's freaking hard to do. Because it's under spring tension. Okay? It's not under as much spring tension now because the recoil spring isn't compressed. Push it, pop it. I mean, actually, now that I know that trick, I mean, it's just as easy as any other gun. There for a while, I just was like, man, this is so stupid. Why are we doing this? Why we got this freaking pin here we got to pop and all this other stuff? So, anyway, I just want to throw that in there. If you haven't, didn't know about that and it helped, um, you know, I'm glad that it helped you because <laughs> I went through the struggles of this. Other than this, I mean, I recommend this gun. If you're looking for a competition gun um, to compete with, um, or for like us, you know, it's just a range gun um, Or go to war if things ever go bad in this country um, You know, this is definitely a go to war gun. I cannot remember the round count on this recoil spring But it is just ridiculous the amount of rounds you can put through this gun Super accurate as long as you can get used to the good trigger on this My problem is is I'm used to shooting uh, at Glocks um, a big Glock guy M&P guy um, they have a little harder and a lot of mush and stuff and I've essentially gotten back or used to a bad trigger and now I'm having to try to get used to a good trigger and it is really messing me up <laughs> so um, once again guys thanks for watching please subscribe if you haven't if you do subscribe or you already subscribe make sure you hit that bell next to the subscribe button that will uh, notify you when I upload um, also on my Facebook, which there's a link in the description, uh, that is where I post all my new uploads first. Um, also, there's a uh, bunch of links to products that I recommend on Amazon. That is my Amazon store. It is an affiliate marketing program, and if you go into them links, you can pick whatever you want. Um, I will receive a small kickback off of that, and that helps fund the ammo and everything I need to keep these videos going, cameras, microphones, um, all that good stuff. And um, also you will see a link to uh, one of my sponsors, which is Grizzly Holster Company. And it, next to that link is going to be a promo code. If you decide to make a purchase off of Grizzly Holster Company, you enter my promo code and you will receive 15% off your holster. Pretty awesome. 
Also, um, Rush Creek Ammunitions for supplying the ammo. Uh, they helped me out with the cost, and it, it really does help. So, I want to encourage you to be performance driven in life and demand greatness. Thanks for watching.